welcome back to our Facebook Live show after GMS. Just a little after 7.45 here. Glad that you're joining us for another great edition, some great conversations. We'll get to it in just a little bit. First, I want to introduce everyone. I'm Tracy McCain here in the studio. Stacy Spivey is back from her little break and vacation. Do you want to tell everybody where you were? Yeah, sure. Um, I took a couple of weeks off to spend some time with family, some much needed time. I hadn't seen my family since last October, um, but the icing on the cake was watching my little brother get married to the woman of his dreams. And um, I had a front row seat because I was a matron of honor. So being able to see his reaction and watch him get to marry Aaron was just like the sweetest thing. And I believe that I cried more at their wedding than I did my own. <laughs> Oh, that is so awesome. Well, you can't make mess up your own makeup at your own wedding, so I get it. <laughs> well, congratulations to them, and happy to have Taran Kirksey and Megan Malaris joining us as well. They are both working from home. And Megan, you have fireworks in your screen here, so I guess we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Or is that from the tease that you're recording? Uh, <laughs> Well, I was just telling our director that, you know, it, it's stuck apparently on oh. 4th of July. It will not change. So unless I reboot my computer, it won't refresh. But I thought, hey, you know, we're going to talk about 4th of July at some point and the events that are and are not happening. So we'll just leave it up. <laughs> you know what? I think you're just rolling with the punches and I love it. You know, it's all about flexibility. Taran, in your uh, field, you have to be flexible all the time. Yeah, you know, the weather's changing all the time. You have to make adjustments and... You know, we're going to do that again today. We have more heat and humidity. That's about the same. But the big adjustment between yesterday and today is I think we'll see a little bit more coverage of pop-up showers and storms today. The chance of rain in your house right around 50%. High temperatures in the upper 80s to low 90s. And then we'll start to see our rain chances beginning to diminish or at least go down a little bit Wednesday and Thursday. And then we're going to keep the rain chance out of the forecast Friday before we see pop up thunderstorms possible again over the weekend. Right now, our rain chance only around 20 to 30 percent with high temperatures in the upper 80s to low 90s. But of course, we will keep you updated on the holiday weekend forecast as we make adjustments over the next couple of days. All right, the keyword adjustments and we're going to have to make some adjustments as we think about school in the fall. So Stacy, start our conversation off. Yeah, that's definitely right, Tracy. We expect to hear from Governor Roy Cooper tomorrow about plans when it comes to the school year restarting. And we want to know what you think about when it comes to the health and safety of our kids when they head back to school. What do you think is most important when it comes to that? Is it social distancing, maybe wearing face masks or virtual learning or limited capacity? You can let us know right now in the comment section while I tell you more about it. So later this morning, the Winston-Salem Forsyth County School Board of Education has a special virtual meeting. They're expected to talk about school reopening options and take action on the adoption of the school calendar. And then this afternoon, Afternoon, the State Board of Education is meeting in a called session to talk about COVID-19 and its impact on the school year. Of course, we will have full coverage on both of those meetings tonight on WFMY News 2 starting at 4 o'clock. So some of you are sharing your thoughts about this on Facebook when it comes to school safety um, being the top priority. R Ramona says everything is on the list. Amy says, I'm worried about how the kids are going to properly learn. Some things need to be taught in the classroom, not online. And Margie says, says kids don't need to be in school at this time. They need to get a handle on this virus. I think that's something that we can all agree with is we are ready for things to get back to normal. But when it comes to the safety and health of our children, I think that we obviously need to take this very seriously, which I do think that Governor Roy Cooper is doing. I'm very interested to hear what he has to say tomorrow about everything. But uh, personally, I believe all of those things that I listed earlier, face masks, virtual learning, um, limited capacity, social distancing, I think that they're all so important when it comes to protecting our kids when they go back to school in the fall. But I'll go ahead and toss it back into you guys. Tracy, uh, what ahead, go ahead with telling me what you think about it. Yeah, so I just put in the comment section that if I had to decide right this minute, I mean like right now, I would choose to keep my kids home. Um, and that would be only because then I would have time to come up with a plan. Who is going to watch them? Who's going to educate them? How am I going to do the learning? Um, and I think that takes time. 
to get a plan in place. You know, no one can just, remember mm -hmm. when school canceled um, in March? So I was off for a week spending time with the kids and then all of a sudden school was cut short and we had to adjust so fast. I had to stay out of work for another week because we didn't have a plan in place. And I understand the severity of the situation. I certainly wasn't mad, but it, it took a while to get that plan of action going. So I think it's gonna take parents some time to adjust and figure out what's best for their families. And the sooner that you know the governor makes a decision, then I guess that there's more time for people to prepare. What his decision will be, I don't know, but I think parents are gonna have a lot to decide once that information comes out. So Meg, you're a new mom. Granted, Christian is probably six months now. Um, you know, what yeah. would you do if he was getting ready for his first day of kindergarten? Oh gosh, I've played this hypothetical scenario over and over again because I'm trying to put myself in these other parents' shoes and it is a really tricky situation. You know, I would want him to go to class, I think, to learn, but I would be concerned about the germ potential, not so much for him and spreading it to other kids, but you know, we've heard of children potentially being asymptomatic and putting teachers and staff members at risk. So what do you do? I mean, do you keep them out for part of the week or every other week? But then what kind of a bind does that put working parents in, in determining how to allocate childcare? And then obviously the Department of Transportation will need to figure out these bus routes, especially if part of the class is going <laughs> one week and part of the class is going another week. The ideal situation would be to send them and to space out the desks accordingly and have them wear masks. But masks are much easier said than done, especially for elementary school kids. I can just picture them trying to fling them at each other you know johnny sneezed in this mask mary threw this at me you know whoo <laughs> that issues a whole slew of other potential problems so um yeah i would not i do not envy the state health leaders and the governor for having to make this decision soon well i love the names that you chose those are my parents names so it's kind of funny <laughs> all right so taran kirksey <laughs> Uh, you get the final word before I read comments here. This is a big decision. How do you play it right? I mean, I don't know if there's a, a one right answer here. You know, they're going to have to try to make the decision they think is best. It is going to be uh, tough, not only for, you know, our governmental leaders at the state level and at the local level to try to figure out things. It's also definitely going to be tough for the parents and just know whatever decision that they make, I would not be surprised if they had to make some adjustments as we go along. So it's something that we'll have to keep in mind. And not only is it gonna to be tough for the parents, you know, it's also gonna to be tough for the teachers. I mean, I'm thinking about, do they, are they teaching half of their students virtually or do you have teachers that are just dedicated to the virtual teaching exclusively and then other teachers that are uh, exclusively uh, teaching the students in the classroom where they have to make two different types of lesson plans. Um, you know, I, I was a teacher for a year and I'm just thinking about like how necessarily would you try to format that to make sure all of your students were, you know, learning at the same level. It could certainly be something tough. So we'll see how it works out. You know, obviously we we'll just have to do the best that we can working through this situation as we go through time. I love how you just skipped over that quick fact that you were a teacher for a year. I caught that. Um, so, you know, we've been talking about students a lot, but staff are also at considerable risk, especially those who have been teaching for a while. Maybe they have underlying health conditions and really can't afford to be exposed um, in this time. So as a former teacher, Taran, uh, weigh in on some of the things that teachers then have to consider. Yeah, you know, it's definitely one of those things. I mean, you're bringing together especially if you're teaching you know at elementary middle school where you know the students may not wash their hands as much as they should and things like that you're bringing all these people into a small room that's something for the teachers to be concerned about and again the room is small so you can only spread out the students so much and you know you have to deal with discipline issues along with trying to social distance in some cases that could be problematic it's a lot to deal with. I mean, teaching, you know, you're, you're already dealing with a lot of different issues. Now you have to put, you know, the uh, health aspect as far as the social distancing and trying to regulate, making sure the students are wearing masks and things like that. It could be pretty difficult. And again, just trying to, if you are teaching both in uh, the classroom and also teaching virtually, if the teacher has to do both, that's going to be extra difficult to make sure that your students are reaching their benchmarks as the 
the year goes along? Are they all learning, you know, at the same level? You know, if you have students that have are having issues, you know, instead of just being able to pull them to the side, maybe during PE or something like that, and kind of go over some things. Now, maybe you have to meet with them virtually. Do you meet with them one on one? I mean, I can think of just all of the the issues here. So again, it's 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 not going to be easy for anybody, but everybody needs to have some patience and understanding and know that <laughs> this is the first time that we've try to do something like this. And so there is going to be a learning curve here. There will have to be changes, I'm sure, as you know, it goes along. So you know, it might roll along the first three or four weeks, see that some stuff's not working well, make some changes and go from there. It could definitely be a uh, pretty tough um, for sure. But I mean, again, you know, I think the obviously the, the health of, of the children is, is paramount and also the health of the staff as well. So it, it, it's going to be um, interesting uh, to see. I think interesting is the, the best word to pick right now because again, everyone's going to try to do the best that they can for mm -hmm. the children, but we'll have to see how it goes. All right. Well, if you are a teacher or a former teacher and you have an opinion, please put in the comment section. I would love to hear that aspect. I mean, Taran, you gave us some insight there um, as your days as a science teacher and you know, Megan had weighed in earlier saying that it's important to keep a positive outlook, especially for the children um, during this time mm -hmm. because they're looking at adults for their cues and how to react. Um, and so, you know, Megan, while you're preparing your response to that, I'm gonna go ahead and read some of these comments that are coming in on our feed. Um, Navette says, I'm not sending mine till they can ensure safety unless they want to be sued. Um, Salomo says, I have a great idea. Let's get all the kids in school their high school diploma and finish that for now. John says, want to keep kids safe? Go for a full head mask and make them look cool so the kids will keep it on. And it needs to have a fan inside so they don't sweat to death either. Um, and then we're also hearing from um, Cheryl who says, send kids A group two days, then B group two days. Use Wednesday for cleaning, so schools in Monday, Tuesday, for then A, and then Thursday, Friday for B, Wednesday for cleaning, rest is online. That's a good idea. You should type that into whoever your district superintendent is. Um, Philip says, virtual learning is best, Zoom classes. Kathy says, limited capacity. Um, Deborah Reed says, space the kids less and have fewer kids in class. Melissa says kids need to go back to school, especially if they're like my son who has special needs and can't focus on a computer to do their work. He starts kindergarten in the fall, but pre-K was hard for him to do on a computer. You know, that is definitely a consideration. Mm -hmm. Not every child learns the same way. Um, some children are better with in-class instruction. Others are better with online learning. I know for myself, I love that face-to-face -face interaction. Um, I always have with my teachers. Um, and Jason says Mount Airy City is going back regular schedule of four days in the year for distance learning. So Mount Airy already having decision. So Megan, I wanna go back to you here as people continue to weigh in. Um, yeah. Positivity is um, something we're gonna have to lean on, especially in the next few days as we're kind of in that wait and see period. Yeah, and of course, that's easier for me to say because I'm not directly in this situation yet. My son is only six months old, but I saw a comment from Jason here on our live feed, and he said no matter what the Board of Education and the governor decides, somebody's going to be mad and somebody's not going to be happy because there is no perfect situation. This is not a perfect reality. I mean, nobody could have predicted this pandemic happening, and there really is, I don't think, a right way to please everybody and ensure that kids have the same experience this year that they had last year before the pandemic. So I read a post shared by one of my teacher friends from another teacher, it appears, and this teacher said, you know, no matter what happens, please, please, please stay positive in front of kids. She said that parents' attitude in this is really going to set the kids up for success or possible failure this year because regardless of the situation, kids are resilient and they just have to make the best of it. So that's up to parents to try to encourage that positive outlook and encourage the best learning regardless of personal feelings about the situation or how much of an imposition it's going to cause parents. And I thought that was important perspective. And and I really enjoyed reading that post today.
Absolutely, thank you for sharing it. One more comment here, Karen is a teacher. She says she teaches elementary music and singing, sharing instruments is not recommended. So she already has some insight in what will happen for her classrooms next year. All right, Megan, we have to put this conversation on hold so we leave time for our next one. Uh, why don't you get us into our morning headlines? Yeah, a few headlines we want to get you caught up on. Our top stories happening across the triad include this. The city of Graham ended its curfew yesterday amid the debate over the Confederate monument outside the historic courthouse. Burlington Mayor Ian Baltudis joined a group of Alamance County community leaders yesterday calling for the monument to move somewhere with historical context. Graham's mayor and Alamance County commissioners say they don't have the authority to move the monument. It's in a public right of way, meaning the city does not own it. DOT says it's working with the city to figure out who actually owns it. We're also learning more about a viral incident that happened at the Cook's Flea Market in Forsyth County. Forsyth County Sheriff Bobby Kimbrough says a deputy asked 27-year-old Charles Moody to leave the market for not wearing a mask, or he had been asked to leave five times for not wearing a mask. After Moody refused, the deputy arrested him for trespassing. Sheriff Kimbrough says Moody had used racial slurs toward the deputy and people inside the market. He's now charged with trespassing and resisting arrest. Sheriff Kimbrough maintains his deputy did nothing wrong. Kimbrough said he did reach out to Moody over the phone to discuss those trespassing charges. All right, our second conversation. Now that the statewide mask requirement is in effect, there are a lot of questions out there about whether you need to wear them at work, in a business, and when you have to be in public. A big question people have surrounds if businesses can refuse service to you or ask you to leave if you are not wearing a mask. So here's what our two wants to know team found out. They did some digging. A business can refuse to let you into the building if you do not have a mask on. Most businesses will have a way to serve you, whether through delivery or curbside pickup. But here's an interesting side note when it comes to people who say they have a medical exception. Then that person is not required to wear a mask in the store. The company is not going to get in trouble, but they will if they ask for supporting documentation. So a business cannot ask you for proof that you have an exception, but they can call police to enforce trespassing if you refuse to use their policies and go inside anyway. The mask requirement debate always gets people talking on our Facebook pages. Uh, here are a few comments. Marshall says you don't have to worry about being refused entry for not wearing a mask if you just wear a mask. Mandy says, I think the mask should be a personal choice for each and every person. Has everyone forgotten that this is America, the land of the free? She continues to say, being made to wear a mask does not make me feel free at all. That was from Mandy Huffman. So there you have it, two sides of this debate. Stacy, we'll start with you. Um, have you noticed people wearing masks into businesses, restaurants, and things of such? And um, what's your reaction to being, if someone were to be refused for service? Well, I do want to mention this. So, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that I was out of town spending time with my family in Arkansas. And the huge difference that I noticed between Arkansas and North Carolina is that when I've been out and about, maybe at a grocery store, maybe went to grab food or something here in North Carolina, I felt like the majority of people were wearing a face mask and it made me feel secure and feel, made me feel a lot better. However, when I went to Arkansas, uh, this past couple of weeks, I noticed not a lot of people are wearing them. Um, so I just say kudos to people here in our state because I feel like that it's safer to wear one. Um, I just personally believe that if it's going to save lives by any means, I'm going to wear it and I'm proud to wear one. I know they're, they're not very comfortable and they're itchy. They make me sneeze every time I put them on. So I understand people don't like to wear them, but if this is gonna prevent you know, people from losing their lives, then I'm all about it. And I, I think that's something that I've continued to say since day one, but I am happy to see that North Carolina is at least being more cooperative than what I've seen in Arkansas. Well, that's interesting perspective because here it's now an order under Governor Cooper's executive order. So people, um, their choices are limited here when it comes to wearing a mask. So that's interesting versus Arkansas where um, that is not in order at this time. Thanks for bringing that up. All right, Taran, um, how do you feel about um, masks being worn in businesses? Have you noticed more people wearing them? Um, and what's your reaction if, if they don't? 
Um, all right. Uh, I've noticed uh, more people wearing them. Um, and I look at it like if it's a business that's their private property, like just like my house is my private property. If they ask me to wear one, then I have to, or just I won't shop there. Those are just kind of my options. You know, it's just like they can demand that I wear a shirt and that I wear shoes and then I put on pants before I go into a store. So it's kind of the same difference uh, to me. Um, and then as far as the, the mask thing, you know, we probably just discussed it a lot. Um, if you look at states, it doesn't matter if it's a Republican governor or a Democratic governor, they're all essentially suggesting to do the same thing. The same can be said at a national level as well. You know, the Democrats and Republicans can't agree on much, but they both are suggesting that we wear them. And even more important than that, politicians, most of them are not doctors. <laughs> they don't have expertise in this, but the people that do, that have been studying this for in some cases more than 50 years as far as uh, infectious diseases that is have suggested that now of course they didn't at first but this is a new virus we're learning new things all the time and they made a course correction and have suggested that we do that so hopefully you know i'll stop there that is that <laughs> but again the bottom line is though if you want to shop somewhere and they want you to wear a mask and you don't want to then don't shop there that's it you do bring up a good point, Taran, because I remember in March, the recommendation from the CDC was you don't need to wear a mask, mm -hmm. right? And look mm -hmm. how far we've come <laughs> in the last three or four months now. Now it's a requirement in several states. So um, this pandemic, uh, this virus is changing, and so is the guidance um, from uh, infectious disease experts, as Taran mentioned. It's just interesting in the course of just a few months how this is all developed. All right, Megan, it is your turn to weigh in here. Is it surprising <laughs> or not surprising that businesses would be able to refuse service if you're not wearing a mask? No, I mean, I don't think it's surprising at all. This is the statewide mandate now. They don't want to be in trouble. They don't want to be liable. Obviously, there is that medical exception, which does make this a little tricky. How do you know if someone truly has a medical ailment? And I think that's Honestly, the, all there is to do is take that person for his or her word. However, know that if you lie about it and say you have a medical reason why you can't wear a mask and then someone contact traces you to an active case of spreading COVID-19, you're going to be in trouble and you're going to be liable potentially for lying about it. So obviously, I do think we need to be mindful and considerate of people who genuinely do have health problems that would prevent them from being able to wear a mask. And I just hope that if those people are out with me in public, that they would heed the caution and social distance and respect my space as well. So as far as I've seen, as I said yesterday on the Good Morning Show, people do seem to be complying with this mask mandate, like it or not. And so hopefully we can get a curb on these new cases that do continue to rise as we've been reporting in our numbers every day. All right, great conversation, people at home, and of course our panel here. Uh, one other thing we'd like to get a curb on, Taran, are these hot temperatures. I mean, we haven't hit 90 yet, but we're so yeah, close. we have not. It's come close several times. We've got to 89. I'm going to forecast the high temperature again today of 89, but if we make it to 90, that'll be the first time uh, this year. So we'll see what happens there. Rain chance right now, 50% this afternoon. We'll see pop-up showers and storms. A few of those could uh, contain gusty wind. The coverage of rainfall will be less tomorrow and even less on Thursday. Thursday's looking to be mostly dry. And then as we go through Friday, should stay pretty dry before we start to see those rain chances being to pop back in to the forecast for Saturday and Sunday. High temperatures stay in the 80s and low 90s from time to time for the next seven days. All right, not a bad 4th of July forecast at all. If only we could have fireworks this year. We know many of those celebrations have had to be canceled, unfortunately. But hey, thank you so much for all of you who are joining us on our Facebook Live feed, weighing in, joining our conversations. We love this. It happens every day at 745 on the WFMY Facebook page. It's called After GMS, and we will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. See ya.